Ultrasound guidance for the placement of central venous catheters is quickly becoming the standard of care. Before ultrasound was widely available, most central venous catheters were placed using blind techniques that relied on anatomic landmarks to estimate the location of vessels. Blind techniques may result in complications in as many as 20% of cases. There is strong evidence that central venous catheter placement with real-time ultrasound guidance is safer than blind techniques. In 2001, an evidence-based report entitled Making Healthcare Safer, prepared for the United States Department of Health and Human Services, strongly recommended using real-time ultrasound guidance for the placement of central venous catheters. Vascular ultrasound allows immediate identification of anatomic variations and confirmation of vessel patency. Real-time ultrasound guidance of line placement allows direct visualization of the needle entering the vessel. It has been proven to decrease the incidence of complications and to decrease the time required for successful line placement. Static ultrasound guidance, in which ultrasound is used only to determine the insertion site but not for direct visualization during a procedure, is less successful than real-time ultrasound guidance. The identification of vascular structures is relatively straightforward. The difference between veins and arteries can be determined by compressibility and shape. Patent veins are completely compressible, have thinner walls, and are ovoid shaped. Arteries are difficult to compress, have thicker walls, and are circular in shape. Veins may collapse completely and may be difficult to identify if a patient is upright or semi-upright. Placing the target vein in a dependent position and having the patient perform a valsalva maneuver may dramatically increase the size of central veins and makes identification and cannulation much easier. A high-frequency linear or microconvex probe is usually best for line placement. The frequency of vascular probes is usually 6 to 14 megahertz. The ideal probe for line placement will vary depending on which vessel is to be cannulated, the depth of the vessel, the size of the patient, and the orientation of the probe in relation to the vessel in either the transverse or longitudinal plane. A sterile glove can be used as a probe cover during central line placement but it is best to use a commercially available sterile probe cover. Sterile probe cover kits contain a long plastic sleeve, sterile gel, and small rubber bands to secure the sleeve. To apply the sterile probe cover, have an assistant place non-sterile gel inside the sleeve and then place the probe into the sleeve, pulling a sleeve over the probe and cord. Place the rubber bands to hold the cover in place. Place some sterile gel on the tip of the probe once the sterile cover is in place. One of the most important aspects of ultrasound guided line placement is the orientation of the probe in relation to the target vessel. Real-time guidance can be accomplished by imaging the vein in either the transverse or longitudinal plane. The transverse approach allows for identification of the vein in relation to the associated artery. The transverse approach is technically easier than the longitudinal approach and is the best method for beginners. With the transverse approach, the needle passes diagonally through the ultrasound plane and appears as a single bright echogenic foci on the ultrasound image. The needle is very echogenic and produces a ring down artifact and shadowing. Beginners may mistake the ring down artifact and shadowing for part of the needle. It is important to realize that the needle tip is not usually visualized in the transverse plane. This can lead to errors in depth perception of the needle tip and injury to structures deep to the vein. The best way to determine the location of the needle is to look for movement of the soft tissue adjacent to the needle. Subtle back and forth movements such as bouncing or wiggling of the needle during insertion causes movement of the surrounding soft tissue, which is easy to appreciate on the ultrasound image. Since the exact location of the needle tip is not obvious, it is important to note the depth of the vessel on the ultrasound image and be careful not to insert the needle beyond the depth of the vessel. It may be possible to see tenting of the anterior wall or complete collapse of the vein when the tip of the needle presses against it. A quick forward movement of the needle at this point may help to puncture the vessel wall. The return of blood confirms intravascular placement of the needle tip. The main benefit of the transverse approach is that it allows simultaneous visualization of both the artery and vein. This allows the operator to advance the needle toward the vein with almost no danger of hitting the artery. The longitudinal approach gives the sonographer much more information during the line placement procedure. 
However, the longitudinal approach is more difficult and can be frustrating for inexperienced sonographers. When the longitudinal approach is mastered, it can be used to directly observe the needle and the needle tip as it is advanced into the vessel. When the needle tip is clearly inside the vein in the long axis view, it is not necessary to draw blood back and the guide wire can be advanced and directly observed as it is advanced into the vessel. Dynamic ultrasound guidance can be accomplished with a one or two person technique. A two person technique with one holding the ultrasound probe and one performing the line placement procedure can be easily employed if the transverse approach is used. When the longitudinal approach is used, the plane of the ultrasound and the plane of the needle must be perfectly aligned, so it is best for one operator to hold both the probe and the needle. There are several locations in which central veins can be cannulated with dynamic ultrasound guidance. The internal jugular vein is often the best choice for ultrasound guided central line placement. The internal jugular vein can be cannulated in the usual position between the heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It may also be cannulated at any other location where there is minimal soft tissue between the skin and the vessel. Hold the probe with a marker dot to the patient's left side so that the patient's left side is on the left side of the monitor and the patient's right side is on the right side of the monitor. The carotid artery will usually be the more medial structure and the internal jugular vein will be more lateral. However, there is significant variability in the position of the internal jugular vein in relation to the carotid artery, and it may be found overlying or even medial to the artery. The vein can be identified by compression, venous flow with Doppler, or increasing size with Valsalva maneuver. Placing the patient in the Trendelenburg position or having them perform a Valsalva maneuver may significantly increase the size of the internal jugular vein. The position of the patient's neck can also influence the relationship of the vein and the artery. Turning the head may cause the artery and vein to overlap rather than be side by side. Holding the probe in a more anterior position, parallel to the floor, rather than laterally, will also help to align the vessels in a side by side position. For the transverse approach, once the target vessel is identified, it should be centered underneath the probe. The ultrasound probe should be held in your non-dominant hand. Insert the needle and slowly advance the needle while watching the ultrasound screen. The needle will appear as a hyperechoic or bright dot with a ring down artifact. Buckling of the vein will appear on the screen when the needle tip is at the wall of the vessel. At this point, use a gentle jabbing motion to cannulate the vein. Once the needle cannulates the vein under ultrasound guidance, you can then drop the probe on your sterile field and proceed with line placement in the usual fashion. For the longitudinal approach, be sure to differentiate the vein from the artery by locating both vessels in the transverse orientation. Then turn the probe 90 degrees to visualize just the vein in the long axis. The marker dot should align so that the left side of the monitor is cephalad. Enter the skin just adjacent to the end of the probe and advance at about a 45 degree angle. When the needle is about 1 centimeter deep, look for the needle tip on the monitor. Then advance the tip of the needle into the vein under direct visualization. When the needle tip is in the vein, advance the wire and watch it pass into the vein. The femoral vein is also a good location for ultrasound guided central line placement. The femoral vein is identified by placing the probe just below the inguinal ligament with the marker dot toward the patient's right so that the patient's right side is on the left side of the monitor and the patient's left side is on the right side of the monitor. Conventional teaching is that the femoral vein is medial to the artery. However, in more than 50% of patients, the vein and artery are overlapping. If the artery completely overlaps the vein, it is best to go to the contralateral side or slide the probe distally to find a point where the artery and vein are side by side. The vein is identified using compression and either the transverse or longitudinal approach can be used. The traditional approach to the subclavian vein is difficult using ultrasound guidance because the proximal portion of the vessel is directly beneath the clavicle. However, the subclavian vein can be cannulated more distally using ultrasound guidance with a longitudinal approach. The subclavian vein and artery are first identified at about the midpoint of the clavicle with the probe in a transverse plane and the marker dot aimed toward the patient's head.
Once the vein is identified, the probe is turned 90 degrees with the marker dot toward the patient's right side. The needle is then advanced under direct visualization to ensure that the needle tip is not inadvertently advanced too deeply. The pleural interface can be seen just deep to the subclavian vessels. Using ultrasound for line placement is relatively straightforward and easy to learn. The most difficult aspect of the procedure is learning how to identify veins and arteries in relation to one another and how to follow the needle tip toward the target vessel.